Hi there and welcome to this video about the Sophistic Bridge Modeler for Revit and its new feature, the Axis Import. I would like to talk about the different file formats available in this release uh, to utilize and generate uh, Axis geometry straightforward in the Bridge Modeler plugin for Revit 2019. So uh, let's jump straight into it. The first import option I would like to talk about is the JSON format. The JSON format actually allows you to re-import a previously exported geometry created within the Bridge Modeler plugin. The file contains geometrical information, placements and variables. To import the JSON file to your project, go to Axis, Import, open the folder where the JSON file is located, select JSON file as a file format. Select the JSON file itself and open it, and then confirm with OK. The information of the Axis is now available in your project. And with the edit command in Axis, you can actually also modify this information. You can see here in this uh, window, you have the horizontal, vertical and placement information available. To see if the generated Axis works as expected, let's assign a superstructure. Therefore, go to superstructure and create command. Now you need to select the axis. And we'll simply assign a default cross section over here. So I go to the variant, select it, leave everything on default and simply confirm with OK. The process to generate the bridge now in Revit takes a few seconds, but here we go. There's our bridge. The second file format using as data source to import geometric information to Revit is the land XML file format. To import an XML file format, you need to do the same steps as previously for the JSON file format. After confirming with OK, the Sophistic land XML import dialog box opens. Let's have a more detailed look at the Sophistic Land XML import dialog box. There are basically three sections, alignments, axis and range. The first section, alignments. The Land XML file can contain several profiles for every single alignment. If that's the case, all available profiles will show up in this section. However, this example, an obviously simple one, only includes one single profile. The second section, axis. The section axis comes with the relevant inputs to position the alignment in the Revit project. There are four options available. By alignment location, places start point of the axis always at the internal origin. The second, by project base point, it places the axis according to the project coordinates. The third option, by shared site, it places the axis according to the shared coordinates. And the last one, by internal origin, which places the axis according to the internal Revit coordinates. Activating the update existing axis checkbox would, avail, would enable you to update a previously created or imported axis. To perform the update, you need to confirm the axis after you confirmed all settings in the Sophistic input dialog box by hitting OK. Information such as placements, variables and secondary axis will remain after the update. The third section, range. As the land XML file might include the entire road alignment, but only a specific part of it is actually required for modeling the bridge, it definitely makes sense only import the relevant part of it. The input at station at start and end allows you to specify this range. The final step in this dialog box is simply confirming all the settings by hitting OK. Now you can also use the edit command in the axis menu to check the information stored in the XML file or also perform some modifications if necessary. If you are using Sophistic's FEA packages for bridge design, 
which actually utilizes a, a similar parametric approach to create bridge alignments, an additional op import option is available for you, based on the CDB, the central database of Sophistic. The steps to do to access the data stored in the database of Sophistic are completely the same as previously for all other input files. So you need to switch to the ZDB file format, select the database and open it. Confirm it with OK and then an additional or a new dialog box will open to give you further options to do. The first part of this dialog box is uh, a list of all access available in the database you have imported. The second part is the position in park part as we already heard about previously for the XML file. So the, again, we have the four options by alignment location, by project base point, by shared site or by internal origin. In the same manner as before, the update functionality of an existing axis is available as well for this kind of file format. So what you need to do is simply tick the update existing axis checkbox to benefit from this possibility. After confirming the dialog box with OK, the geometry will show up immediately in your project. Again, you got the possibilities to modify or double check the geometry you have imported recently. So we have horizontal, vertical, alignment information as well, the placements. Importing an alignment based from a text file is a further option. Basically, the text file needs to include the coordinates of the alignment relevant points. Files such as text, CSV or any other text file are supported by this option. To open the text file, uh, you need to go through the same steps as we saw already three times before. The only difference is simply tick the right type in the open dialog box to target the right files for you. The import dialog box for this file format looks a bit different as the previous one. Besides the units at the very top of the dialog box, the data table presents the input of the source file. You need to assign the columns to their correct property. The default is set to none to all entries in the drop-down menus. It's not essential to provide the station information, however it increases the accuracy of the axis definition. As the source file is a text file, it becomes essential to divide the inputs with a separator. The kind of separator can be selected in the drop-down menu during the import. Depending on the, uses, on the used uh, spreadsheet application, you might need to choose a specific decimal separator as well. Again, to place the alignment in the Revit project, pick one of the available positioning options as we heard already before. As the access information is based on coordinates, performing any modifications based on element types isn't an option for this input method. The horizontal and vertical options are locked when opening the editing axis dialog box within the Sophistic Bridge Modeler. This brings me already to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. And I also put some information in the description, so have a look uh, to that as well and uh, it would be awesome if you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on new uh, videos thank you very much for watching see you next time take care